in the housing. Make it so that we can stick one housing on top of another and have 175 concentric nestings line up perfectly with 175 below. After spending days in an exhausting effort to fix the helium leak and stay on schedule, the XRS team now faces an even more serious problem. There was a leak which turned out to be in the vent line, and we found that with, with this leak detector, um, and were able to patch it and repair it, and unfortunately what happened was during the repair, during the testing of the repair, um, we got an ice plug in the helium fill and vent lines for the test doer, um, and that actually ruptured and caused some damage. This, of course, has set us back quite a bit. The XRS team goes into crunch mode, with shifts working around the clock to fix the damage, test the system, and get back on schedule. It's become the most grueling, the most trying few weeks the XRS team has had to go through. Tension strains the team, testing nerves and patience. Is that a joke? Um, no, it's, it's actually it's a Goddard thing. I'm calm. The mirror team had its share of problems, too. Early on, we had some structural problems. In a couple of cases, mirror assemblies did not pass uh, vibration testing, which simulates the rigors of launch. We went in and made repairs to the assemblies and retested successfully. The X-ray telescope quadrants are ready for more testing and final assembly. You're seeing the edges of, of the foils in many, many arcs like that. That's the 175 nestings. So then you got a quadrant. Now we're going to do some optical testing with that, and then we start doing X-ray testing with it. And so what we're looking for is to contain the photons in as small a circle as possible. The better the focus, the more photons will arrive onto the XRS. So the process is, is done again in optical and white light by putting the four quadrants on the ring and then looking at where each quadrant projects its image and adjusting these until they all project to the same spot. With the assemblies complete, the telescopes can be packed and sent to Japan for further testing and final assembly onto the spacecraft. It's been a tough few weeks for the XRS team, but their determination and drive to stay on schedule pays off. So, so we're going to uh, deintegrate the FD-80R this morning. It could be done in about an hour and a half. And then that ends this series. And then we're on to the cryostat integration. Back where we should be. The people are a little bit happier than they have been over the past few weeks because we've actually we made a new schedule after we had the, the accident, the damage to the test door, and it looked like if we really worked hard, we could get done in time to deliver in mid-March, which is when we need to deliver in order to launch on time. Um, we've actually gained on that schedule. We're six days ahead of that schedule right now, uh, so that has some some slack in the schedule as well. So we've got a little bit of room now to breathe. So everybody's feeling a little bit happier. It's really nice to be done with the, this calibration, the interim calibration, and going back into the real flight unit. It's time. Time to pack up the XRS instrument and ship it to Japan to be assembled onto the Astro E2 spacecraft. The, the key point here is to not break anything. We've gotten to the point where we have no time left. We've got to get it uh, in there and over to Japan in the next couple of days. We don't have time for any mistakes. Everybody's working very hard to get this thing ready to go and out the door in time. We have to keep the instrument cold during transport, and so we have something like 450 pounds of dry ice that they're going to put in this thing. Dry ice is uh, frozen carbon dioxide. It's a lot colder than regular ice, but the key thing is 
it doesn't melt, it just turns back into uh, CO2 gas. Uh, and then we'll scoop most of it out at the other end because that's actually enough to last a lot longer than we think we'll need. Again, putting in lots of margin so that it, even if things go wrong or something goes funny, we got plenty. The telescopes and XRS instrument go to Japan, but our story doesn't end here. In Japan, the instruments will be assembled into the Astro E2 spacecraft, where everything will be rigorously tested again. Astro E2 will then be placed atop a Japanese M5 rocket for ultimate launch into orbit. Following Japanese tradition, once safely on orbit, the spacecraft we know today as Astro E2 will get a new name. That name will remain a secret until then. Caleb Houston, everybody around here has looked at the bird and it looks real good. Roger, roger. And uh, you're being awaited by the USS Ticonderoga. And uh, we're waiting to see you back here in Houston, too. All righty. You can relay to the Tyco. We've got their Fox Corpin and our hook is down. Roger that. This was Skylab on the final day of the first manned mission. And if you got the crew had this to, last uh, view as they made preparations for return to uh, Earth. Give it to you here. It had been a successful mission. The large majority of scientific objectives were accomplished. But the bright orange sunshade, the single solar wing, presented a striking reminder of a mission that was something...